So today I'm going to show you how to get your computer up and running a little bit smoother and give it a better performance for your retro gaming and your PC gaming. I'm going to be showing you how to declutter your computer and also optimize things as well with disabling apps which say Windows 11 has going on in the background so as you're playing. So for those out there who's getting bad performance and you're finding games are lagging, you're going to want to watch this video. I'm going to cover a lot so check this out. Okay, so before I continue, if you like today's video, just hit notifications and also subscribe. I cover a lot of retro-related content, such as emulation and front ends and also standalone emulators. So let's talk about cleaning up Windows and getting your better performance. So I'm using Windows 11, and as we know, probably since around Windows 8, Windows or rather Microsoft have literally cluttered and bombarded your operating system with garbage we don't want. So in the background, whilst we got games running, being at PlayStation 3 emulation or just general PC gaming, we've got a lot of processes running in the background, hogging memory and putting pressure on CPU, that type of thing. So let's look at disabling some apps first. So what we're gonna do to do this is, if we just go to the search bar, I'm gonna go up to settings, and from settings, we can go down to apps. And first thing I want to look at is the installed apps. So if I just click on installed apps, we can see just here, rather than going into control panel and uninstalling apps, we can actually do it here. So this is everything I've got installed pretty much. Now to uninstall these, all you're gonna do is just left click on the three horizontal lines, and if you don't want this app, then just go to uninstall. Now you're gonna find here also that things like Cortana are a little bit more difficult to remove, but saying that it can actually be done, but it's a bit more technical. So if we go to the three horizontal lines and uninstall is grayed out, we can actually go to advanced options and from advanced options, we can choose to turn everything off. And of course, if things are turned on, that's gonna be hogging your hardware resources. So you can start by turning everything off that you don't need. And believe me, this is going to save us memory. So another example, if I go down to say, OBS Studio, which I'm recording right now, just uninstall it if you don't want it. So next up, we got defragging your hard drives. And this is quite a bit of a no brainer. I think a lot of people at this point know how to do this. If we just type in search bar, disk defrag, and we choose defragment and optimize drives. This is gonna load up disk defrag. And from here, this is going to defrag and optimize our hard drives to give us a better performance. So to do this, once we've got optimized drives open, we're just gonna select each drive we've got. So C drive is my solid state drive. And if I want to optimize this and let Windows clean it up and give us a better performance, I'm gonna just hit optimize. And if you continue this process for each drive that you've got, then things are going to start running a little bit better. And you need to wait for this. It's going to take a little bit of time for things to be analyzed, as you can see, and ultimately optimize it. So it's a very good way of putting all your files into the correct places, which Windows does for you. Okay, so next up, we have got cleaning your disk. Again, we're going to go down to search. And if I type in disk clean, and we've got disk cleanup. If we go here, this is gonna take away all the unnecessary junk that you can't necessarily easily access. So from here, you can choose a drive. I'm gonna use my C drive for this, press okay. And that's gonna scan all the unwanted files on your computer. So if you just go through each one of these and you can select what you want and you don't want. And as we can see just here, we're actually gonna be saving quite a substantial amount of space. So press OK on that. And are you sure you want to permanently delete these files? Just delete files. And once your disk cleanup is gone, we're gonna go back to search again and type in disk cleanup and enter that again. And I'm gonna use C drive again. This time I'm gonna to go to clean up system files just here and OK.
And again, just another process of going down and checking everything and then just simply pressing OK and delete files and that's going to clean up and get rid of unwanted files just there. And we can also change how Windows performs uh, through changing its power settings. So for example, if I just go down to search, I've just typed in power and I'm going to select from here power sleep in battery settings. And if I just scroll down just a little touch here, power mode, I've currently got mine on best performance. If you've got yours on balance, then I recommend putting this on to best performance. And that's going to give you a bit of extra boost. Okay, so we're going back to power options again. Underneath power plans, we should have a couple extra options. And in some cases, Windows has some sort of bug where it's disabling these and you can't see high performance or ultra performance modes at all. But we can change this. So I've got a piece of code here on a notepad. And what I'm going to do is just highlight all of this by left clicking and hovering over everything. And I'm going to right click copy. And I'm now going to go to search bar and just type in CMD. And this is command prompt. So we're going to open this and run as administrator. And Windows command processor, just press yes. Now in this command prompt, I'm going to just press Control and V together and press enter. And as we can see, this has now been entered in and it's identified it as high performance. If we go out of here, and go back to the power options it's not going to be changed so we need to restart the computer to be actually listed so once you've done this just restart your computer okay another very good resource i use from time to time is razor cortex and what razor cortex does is takes away all the unnecessary apps running in the background and it saves all your resources that you need so whilst we're playing a game if there's things running in the background and razor cortex deems it as unnecessary what it does is just takes away those processes automatically or you can edit it manually and it gives us a better performance let me show you how this works so if i just type in razor i've already got this installed i'm going to go to razor cortex and i'm going to go to game booster and if i go to boost now we can see this is now releasing memory so it's taken away and it's disabling all those unnecessary apps which are processing in the background and as we can see this has now saved me 1.66 gigabyte of memory and it doesn't seem much but it's a hell of a lot when you're playing an intensive game so Razer Core X and I'm going to leave the link in my description for this one and we also need to make sure that if you're using a graphics card that your drivers are all updated. So I use an RTX GeForce 3050 and I've also got GeForce Experience and I'm going to open this up. Now if you're using a GeForce GPU, I'm going to suggest you open this up or you download it. And if we go to drivers just here, we can check for updates and that's going to download us the latest drivers, giving us the best performance possible for your NVIDIA graphics cards. And if you've got an AMD card, then you'll have the equivalent to GeForce Experience, I'd imagine. So next one I've got for you, this is specifically looking at GeForce RTX cards and sometimes games you download are going to be a bit outdated which is going to make those DLSS games a little bit laggy or in fact so laggy they're unplayable. So there's a website called Tech Power Up and I'm going to leave the link in my description and we can download the latest .dll file and we can actually install this into our DLSS games. So for example, I've got Cyberpunk here. If I just right click on the shortcut, open file location, and normally your DLSS games are located in the root directory. And here we go. So this is the one, and this could be an outdated file, and they go by the name of nvngx underscore DLSS dot DLL. Now this one's actually up to date. If yours is out of date, then I'd recommend downloading the latest .dll and just literally dragging it in and replacing that order file. So just drag it in and replace. And undoubtedly, from personal experience, your lagging games are going to be amazing afterwards. 
Now, a bit of a no-brainer, but if we just go down to search bar again, I'm going to type in updates, check for updates. And just from here, we're going to make sure that Windows has got the latest updates possible. So just check for updates and let that do its thing. Now, another thing which isn't widely talked about, but I find it helps performance for my retro gaming and PC gaming, is the scale. Now, if I right-click on my desktop and I just go down to display settings, if I drop this down, I'm going to go to scale. And if I go to 100% on this, it's going to make things smaller, but the resolution is a bit sharper. And I do find sometimes this helps. And whilst we're here, we can also adjust our resolution. So I'm going to just leave mine to 1920 by 1080p. Now, if you really want to go hardcore, I recommend changing the look of Windows. So, of course, since around Windows 7 to Windows Vista, Microsoft started introducing really nice aesthetics and visuals, really, for our operating systems. So, for example, everything from my background here to my taskbar at the bottom, everything is eaten away, memory and hardware resources. We can actually disable this, and although it's gonna look a bit bland, it will take away stress on your hardware. So to do this, I'm gonna just right click, and I'm gonna to go to personalize, and from personalize, we can change all sorts here. So we can go to background, and I personally recommend putting your background as a solid color. And you can choose a really funky color just here. And like I say, this surprisingly will take away stress on your hardware. So if we just come out of here, and if we just go down to taskbar from here, we can turn off widgets and chat, that type of thing. So it's all those apps which are running in the background, which are actually eating away your memory and you don't really need them on. So that's another thing to consider. You can even use task manager to disable background processes. So I just press control or and delete and I'm gonna select task manager. Uh, once task manager is open from here, we can see all the processes running in the background of Windows. And if we look at the memory just here, and even the disk and the CPU, we can see percentages. So right now, as I'm recording this video, we got OBS Studio running, and that's eaten away at my memory, as we can see just here. So if there's background processes running that you don't want on, you literally just highlight and right click, and we can simply just choose End Task. Just go careful with what you're disabling and ending just here because there's a lot of processes which needs to be turned on. If you end the wrong process, then your computer might likely crash. So just go very careful on this one. And another option which Windows 11 has is Xbox Game Bar. And again, most of the time, this is very unnecessary. We can actually disable the Xbox Game Bar. If I just go down to search again, and I type in app and settings, and if I just go down to gaming just here, we got Xbox Game Bar. So what I'm gonna do is just enter into here and just make sure this one is actually turned off. And Windows 11 has also got a feature called Game Mode. So Game Mode pretty much does what my Razer Cortex app does, and it takes away a lot of background processes in the background. So to do this, we're just gonna to go to Settings again, and from Settings, we're gonna to go to Gaming. And from Gaming, we're gonna to go to Game Mode, and just make sure that game mode is enabled. And like I say, that's gonna take away resources in the background running so we can have a smoother gaming experience. And we're now gonna go into taskbar. Now, if we press control, alt and delete on our keyboard all together and just open up task manager, now we can choose here what we want running when Windows starts up. So not necessarily so much for gaming, but this is gonna make booting into Windows a bit more quicker. So to do this, we're gonna to go to Startup Apps, which is the fifth icon down on the left here. And from here, we can choose what we want enabled and disabled. So for example, that annoying Cortana, if we want to turn that off, I'm gonna just right click on it and just go to disable and so on. So that's another very good way of giving you a little bit more beef and juice in your computer. 
I'm also going to recommend that you make sure you've got your DirectX user runtime web installer and downloads for DirectX actually up to date. So again, leave the link in my description for this. And if I just go to download on this, it's going to download the runtime web installer. So if we just go to click here to download manually, for you it might automatically download. What I'm going to do is just open up this and Microsoft DirectX. And from here, we can now download the latest DirectX drivers and just make sure to uncheck the install Bing bar. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily need that. So let's press next. And this is now downloading and installing all the components for DirectX to give us a smoother gaming experience. And in fact, there is some games which do require these files anyway. And another pack which is really good for getting your games up and running a little bit smoother, and in some cases you're going to need this anyway, is the Visual C++ Read Distributable Runtimes All-in-One. So this is on Tech Power Up, and I'm going to just download this. And what this does is downloads all of those Visual C++ Redistributables, and here we go. So it downloads into a zipped folder. And I'm going to just right click on my desktop and just create a new folder. Don't need to call this anything. And I'm going to highlight by pressing Control and A all of these files. I'm going to drag it into this new folder just here. And once this is all dragged in, if I just go to install all at the top just here, open this up, more info, run anyway. And this is going to install every runtime package one after the other. So it's going to be a process of pressing OK and yes. And that's going to do your computer the world of good. And like I said, Visual C++ is required for games as well as the DirectX package that I've just downloaded and installed. Now this one is going to be a bit of a no-brainer, but obviously if you've got Steam running and you're not using it, then obviously just disable that. So most apps on Windows can be disabled by going down to this little tray just here and just right-clicking on your app and just pressing exit. Now for some games, you're going to need Steam actually running, so that's going to be impossible. But for other things you're running which don't require Steam, then it's just a case of going down to your tray and right-clicking on the the icon so for example i'm going to exit cortex right now and that's going to disable it and just get rid of it we're also going to look at disabling windows notifications so to do this i'm going to go to settings and open up the settings app and if i just use system just here from system i'm going to go down to notifications and once we're in notifications i'm going to drop this top one down just here and just make sure everything just here is disabled if you've got it enabled so these little tips and setting changes that i've showed you in today's video is going to undoubtedly give you a performance boost so make sure to check some of those out of course we can go on and on and on for life uh talking about how to optimize computers but i've pretty much got you there with the basics so if you like this video like i say hit notifications and make sure to subscribe and also be sure to check out my emulation content on Retrobat, Batacera, Launchbox and also check out my new membership option where you can join and get cool emojis and also my merch too. Check those out. I've got some cool stuff there. But until next time, stay retro.